Welcome, friends, to the nerdiest thing you're going to do all week, the Survivor Power Rankings. I'm your Survivor buddy, Gordon Holmes, here, and I am giddy as a schoolgirl to be joined by Survivor 43 finalist and all-around wonderful fella, talking about Owen Knight. Owen, welcome. Thank you, Gordon. Good to see you again. Uh, congratulations to me on my victory this past week, getting the full 14 points, but uh, sad to see Sarah go. We need a term for that when you nail it perfectly, and you did nail it. Uh, you had Sarah in spot 14. I wasn't too far behind. I had her in spot 12. Uh, so the current score right now, as you can see below, is Team Holmes with 23 and Team Knight with a very impressive 30. Uh, uh, in the comments section, uh, Alex Milne, welcome to the party, and Tara V. Uh, they also called it. They had Sarah in spot 14. Sanju was respectable, but we both bested him. Uh, he had Sarah in spot 10. And Alan did just a little bit worse, but still respectable uh, in spot 9. Again, I, I, it, not a shock uh, that Sarah went home. Not to downplay your, your, you know, your pick, <laughs> but uh, she was on the bottom of that tribe and, uh, yeah. Shame, shame to see her go. Shame to see uh, the inheritance advantage uh, make its way out of the game. Maybe not a shame uh, if you talk I, to some people. Well, I'm sure we will. It will have a triumphant, maybe not so triumphant return. I'm sure it'll appear somewhere uh, in the not too distant future. They'll just hand it to somebody. That's what they do these days. You don't have to That's dig what... anything up. You don't have to find a red X. You just show up at an island, and they're like, you know, welcome. It's like a parting gift. It's like when you go. Yeah. It's like when you oh, it used to be on the Price is Right. They would send you home with rice aroni. Now. Go to the yes. island, get an idol. It's a pretty sweet deal. There you go. Yeah, on my season with the um, Knowledge is Power, Geo got voted out with it pre-merge. And then uh, at the mergatory, or I forget what round exactly, but when there were you know, 11 or 12 people left in the game, it was just in the bottle in the water well. Uh, and so they, I imagine the Survivor Gods have something planned for the inheritance advantage because I'm sure they love that idea. Of right. the it, 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 that, when, anytime someone gets voted out, hit that water well. You never know what kind of treat is waiting there for you. Yeah. All right, so let's uh, let's get into this mess. All right, the rules are each week our two combatants will create separate power rankings. The ranking of the person who is voted out of the next episode will determine the number of points the players will earn. For example, if Danny is voted out this episode, God forbid, Owen will receive one point and I will receive two points. At the end of the season, the person with the most points will be named the Survivor 44 Power Rankings Challenge Champion. And always important to bring this point up because people will call us out and be like, you guys are idiots. This person's not going to win. No, 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 no. That's not what we're saying. <laughs> Rankings are not based on who the player thinks is most likely to win. The smart strategy is to rank players based on how safe you think they are in the upcoming vote. All right. Owen, ready to rock and roll? Yes, sir. Let's do it. I can't. I, can't, I love it. I love the I love the thing, the blue. All right, Owen, who you got number one? Number one, I'm keeping him up top, Danny. He performed so well in the challenges, and he's such a fun person to watch on the screen. Um, he was somersaulting all over the place. I loved his line that bag searching is okay in my book, and when we're reading my book, I, I think he's gold, and he's in a really good position. I like that he kind of called a little armistice between the pairs, and it seems like Josh was going to be in trouble prior to the swap, but he seems to be in a great position on Soka. Just like the Boston Rob rules, we have the Boston Danny rules. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure where he's from. Uh, in spot one, I have Carson, uh, which is a shock because he's on a new tribe. But as the new person on a tribe and he's holding an idol that's only good for another 15 minutes or so, uh, he's going to be on high alert. If something feels off, he's going to play that thing. And honestly, the odds of a stacked tribe like Ratu going to tribal at all before the merge seem very slim. Uh, and before we move on real quick, um, shouldn't everybody realize that they're not going to send one person to a new tribe without some kind of protection? I feel like that that seems I, I don't know if there's a past example of this, but like it would seem very foolish to send one person over unarmed. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I think Carson is going to be super safe this week. Yep. Uh, in spot two, uh, I have Danny. Now, picture this scenario. Uh, Jamie's feeling a little nervous at Tribal Council. so She plays her fake idol. Jeff Probst gleefully tosses it into the fire and the members of Soka are high fiving each other. Then Jamie plays her real idol, and all of those high fives stop. She should be the safest person on the show because she's the idol holder out of the five five legitimate idol holders uh, who should hesitate the least to play one because she thinks she has two. So then I think Danny sees Jamie playing an idol, realizing his goose may be cooked with a single vote, and then he plays his idol. So Danny, uh, with the Boston Danny rules, safe in spot two. Awesome. And I have a similar choice for you for number two. I've got Carson at two. Um, I thought he did a really good job socially. I mean, Matthew helped him out a bit there by bringing him information, but it seems like people want to work with him. And as you mentioned, he's got that temporary idol. So no reason for him to not play it if Ratu loses. For number three, I'm going with Jamie for similar reasons as Carson. I 
it's it's I struggled with Jamie this week because on one hand, if there was not an idol in play, she would be the obvious vote off of Soka. Um, I think the four, Heidi, Danny, Franny, and Matt all seem to be kind of locked in. They want to go to the merge together as a foursome. But Jamie has kind of thrown a little spanner in the works, as they say on Australian Survivor. Um, and like with Carson, there's no reason to not play that idol. I'm hopeful that if Soka loses, they do figure out a way to uh, move around that or placate her somehow, but I just have a hard time thinking that she would just not play it. Okay. Uh, in spot three, I have Brandon. Uh, right now, these tribes can smell the merge or, or the mergatory. Uh, and after that, you know, Brandon becomes a target, but for now, there's no reason to send him home. Uh, I am interested, however, in what's up with him and Matthew. Uh, seemed like they were super close during Sweat versus Savvy, but we haven't seen him since. And it seems like Matthew is like kind of saw Jamie as his number two and now might be considering Carson for that role. So what's going on with Matthew and Brandon? We don't know, but I still think Brandon's safe. Uh, at spot four, I've got Lauren. Yeah, you blew it in the challenge, but no harm, no foul. Uh, they were able to, to overcome that. And with that extra vote, she's going to be very valuable come merge time. And again, I feel like it's super unlikely that Ratu is going to visit tribal again. Spot four for me, I've got Carolyn. I think she's in the driver's seat over Antika. We saw her decide to vote with Josh at the previous tribal council to get Sarah out, which I thought was curious. I don't necessarily think it was a bad move, but um, I think there could have existed a scenario where she told Jam Jam and got Jam Jam in on the vote and got Sarah out three to one. So she will have some work to do if she decides to keep Jam Jam in her long term plans. But either way, it Based on the next time on Survivor, it looks like Josh and Jam Jam will be voting for each other. So Carolyn will have the uh, the decision to make there. Plus, she has an idol if things go fully sideways there. Oh, Owen, I think I know what our disparity of the week is already. Oh, man. Yep. All right, so spot five, I have Lauren. So similar thoughts to you. She seems to be in a good place socially. She's got that extra vote in her back pocket. I felt for her so bad watching that slow-mo belly flop. That must have been really, really painful. And you kind of see she came out all disheveled and just, I, that would hurt. Like those, those things are high up and uh, that ocean is tough. So props to her to still making that long swim. But yeah, I, I don't see her going home anytime soon. She seems to be pretty ingratiated in Ratu. And like you said, they're, they're pretty strong in challenges. So I don't see them losing. Yeah. Uh, in spot five, I have Jamie. Like I said before, with two idols, she should be the idol holder, least likely to hesitate playing one if she gets nervous. And remember, she played her shot in the dark like it was no thing. Uh, she's only this low because I know she'll be a target and maybe Danny and Heidi can thoroughly convince her uh, that she's safe. So that's the only reason I have her this low. Uh, in spot six, I've got Heidi. Again, Soka's got me really nervous with a potential Jamie vote. If the couple stick together and target her, she can idle out anybody she wants. What makes sense to me is Danny and Heidi being like, oh no, Matt and Franny are a couple. They hold hands and plan road trips. One of them's got to go. So they have her vote one of those ways, and then she gets nervous, plays the idol, and one of them goes home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I actually, we have a lock here, our lock of the week as of right now. I've got Heidi at six as well. Uh, she and Danny seem to be in a really good partnership as a duo. And since I have Danny as my number one, I guess it makes more sense for me to have uh, Heidi higher than Franny or Matt. Um, I do think the showmance will be easier to pitch as a target to Jamie if they do lose a challenge. Uh, but I've got the Soka members a little bit higher because I, I don't think they're going to lose. They absolutely demolished the challenge this week. They're physical. They're great at puzzles. So they are uh, a really strong tribe. Lock of the week. Best friends. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> So for seven, I'm staying on Soka. I do have Franny there. Um, as I just mentioned, there is a possibility that uh, Danny and Heidi convince Jamie to target one of the uh, nerdy magnets if they do lose. Um, but I think Matt would be in more trouble with than Franny, just since he doesn't have his vote. He's got his fake idol. Maybe he would try to play it. Like There's a lot of scenarios where things can go wrong for Matt. So uh, I'm hoping that Franny is slightly safer and uh, got her here at seven because I don't think Soka's going to lose. I'm taking a bit of a gamble in seven. Um, we have a preview that makes it look like Matthew might leave for medical reasons. I'm not completely convinced. The producers don't tend to tip their hands that much. Uh, so I think he, he, while he will have troubles, I think he will stay in the game. Uh, the only reason he's so low in the ranking is I could be wrong. Uh, otherwise, I'd have him super high. Interesting question, though. If he gets medevac, does he take his idol with him Korong style? Mm, that's a great question. I, I would guess so. I would guess so. Why would you do that? Like, I, 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 I couldn't imagine, like, does production even let you keep them anymore? I, like, that'd be the only reason to do it. Uh, but yeah, I, I think there would be something about, like, I'm going out, but I'm, I'm still going to have a say 
in how somebody mm. goes. So I, I think I would hand it over to to whoever yeah. I was close with. I never had an item, so I never got to ask about the rules. Oh. I know. Poor me, never found one. <laughs> well, now they just hand you one. Yeah, right. Welcome to the game, Owen. Here's your yeah. Reach into this bag. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Actually, no, it's just on the table. Here you I, go. Uh, <laughs> Uh, in spot eight, I have Kane. Uh, the bad news about Carson joining uh, a tribe that already has Brandon is tribe strength uh, is no longer an issue. Um, we've seen so little of Ra too um, that I don't know how Kane is faring with them. But Jamie was the most likely non-Kane target last time we saw what they're up to, and now she's gone. So uh, if Ra too hits tribal, and I think that's a big if, uh, I see Kane being the one to get the boot. It's funny you mentioned Kane because I have him at number eight as well. So we've got two locks this week. Look at us go. Best um, friends. So I, yeah, I actually have Kane higher than Brandon because actually I think the inverse in terms of their strength, Kane being the number two makes him less threatening in my opinion as they're approaching the merge. They might view this as a time like, oh, we're merging tomorrow probably. Let's just get Brandon out of here. And I can also see Kane connecting with Carson a little bit better than Brandon can. They both have kind of some, some obviously some nerdy vibes to them, some D and D, you know, RPG games, that sort of thing. Um, but I mean, that's that's maybe a judging a book by its cover. But Brandon, as we saw, he is a Renaissance man. He's got a lot of shared interests. So I'm sure him and Carson can find a mutual ground as well. But um, just on paper, the the bespeckled boys, I think, might connect faster number nine we're going over to tika i've got jam jam at number nine uh i have dropped him pretty low relative to where i've had him i had him as high i number two last week um he was shocked by the vote last week you saw his face his jaw was wide open just like mine was at the end of final tribal last year but he is uh now gonna have to do some work with carolyn carolyn was not appreciating that jam jam was kind of telling her what to do uh, anointing her as the decoy vote to tell Josh, and she did not like that. And I certainly understand where she came from. I think um, it's going to take some work for them to get on the same page, but I do think that is the most likely outcome. Um, but I am still nervous, so I put him a little bit lower this week. Okay. Uh, in spot nine, I have Franny. Uh, the scenario I talked about earlier is why Matt and Franny are so low. It would just be so easy to convince Jamie that one of them should go. Uh, and even if the couples do stick together, that's team uh manny and team heidi i think was what someone had said on twitter I'll, I'll look that up and make sure they get credit um heidi and danny heidi uh even if they do work together uh jamie's definitely gonna be willing to risk one of her two idols uh and in that sense matt or fran are going to go out with jamie's single vote wow i hope that doesn't happen but we'll see you love love you're like probes i do probes, i'm rooting for love loves love probes you? really loves love i'm sure he'll be tickled like i'm sure they're these are gonna be Topic of the after show. Uh, in spot 10, like I said, two scenarios. Either Heidi and Danny successfully pull Jamie to their side, or Matt and Franny are the decoys, and Jamie idles one of them out. And I think Matt is the most likely because Franny is just super savvy, uh, to be honest. Uh, like I said, I, I think Matt does know about the desires of Phony. I think that the, the word eventually got to him from Franny. But uh, I think given given the choice between the two, I think Matt's the one that gets the... the I keep saying gets the boot. Like He's the one that gets voted out. Why do you always got to, you know... Pick them on the way out the door. Right. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Uh, so 10 for me, I've got Matthew. I have bumped him down a little bit due to the scene on next time on Survivor. The editors have me nervous. Like, it would be one thing if they showed Matthew just talking about the injury and that he wakes up in pain and that he's really dealing with it. But the fact that they showed him falling off the rock again gave me the heebie-jeebies. I, he I fell off the rock again? Yeah. Why would he climb up there again? Yeah. Why? What, <laughs> like, didn't he learn his lesson? Didn't you learn? He fell in the exact same pattern right into the same little title <laughs> too. It's very weird. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know why they're showing us that again. So I, I am a little bit nervous for Matthew. Um, so I've bumped him down here, but he's still not the least safe on Ratu, in my opinion. I've got one more below. So speaking of that one person below Matthew on Ratu, I have Brandon at the 11 spot for me. Uh, so this might be our biggest uh, disparity of the week. So I think, as I mentioned before regarding Kane, like I, I think there's a chance if Ratu loses... They just kind of cut bait and they say, okay, tribe strength doesn't really matter as much anymore. We're about to merge. Brandon is, he's shown he's got a good read on the game. He played his idol at the first tribal. He's obviously in very, very great shape. Like we got to get rid of this guy or else he could go on an immunity run. So I could see that happen. Um, so yeah, I, I, and well, we shall see. And it would break the, the streak of women getting voted out as well. So um, we can see what happens there. I think Owen is playing like a man with a lead. <laughs> uh, I, I think you have uh, one person from each tribe in your final three. I did the opposite. And I believe mm. this is a power rankings first, for me at least, 
all of the members of a single tribe are at the bottom of a power ranking. Bold strategy, wow. Cotton. Let's see if it plays off. Uh, Tika is in shambles. Uh, if Josh trusts Carolyn, he will quickly learn how erratic she is. Both Jam Jam and Josh should be scared to death of working with her because she's smart, she's willing to make big moves, and it seems like she is easily offended. Yes, she has an idol, but she's shown she's prepared to hang on to it, even when things seem iffy. So I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if Josh and Jam Jam realize that they can't go to the merge with her because they absolutely cannot trust her. So uh, Carolyn, despite having an idol, uh, despite seeming to have the, the dominant alliance in her tribe, she is low on my rating. And in spot 12, Josh, what a week for Josh, totally in the dark about how Soka felt about him, yet able to sniff out. Uh, that his new tribe was, tri was trying to send him home. Question is, did Carolyn tell him to play it for himself, or did he figure that out? Uh, but we we, don't, we just don't know yet. At any rate, nobody on Tika is safe. They are a dumpster fire. Oh, and before we move on, Owen, uh, I know you don't watch my exit interviews, um, but Sarah said that the, the one of the reasons she knew that he was a uh, that that Josh was a surgeon was because he has a medical tattoo on his back. <laughs> Which if he if he does and Josh is like oh no I'm a I'm a personal trainer that's why I have a medical tattoo on my back oh my so that, god yeah, so that so yeah so that, so uh, uh, if you're watching this and you're not Owen there is absolutely um, a benefit to watching my exit interviews you should check them out there's all kinds of fun info uh, that being one of the things and the fact that you laughed makes me think you did not watch my exit interview with Sarah. I haven't watched any this week, to be fair, Gordon. I, have, I haven't watched Elton, I haven't watched Mike, I haven't listened to Rob yet. It's been a busy week, um, but I have not heard that story. That is why I heard the story that they heard him talking in the strategy session about having steady hands, but that tattoo is wild. And also, fun fact, people might not guess by looking at me, I'm actually a personal trainer as well. I, I coach fitness classes, and no one calls it a physical trainer. That's not like the verbiage that anyone uses. So that was already suspicious. That I'm, a phys I'm a physique trainer. consultant. Uh, in Physi my phys physical movement person consultant. <laughs> yeah. But um, that's insane. I can't even think of what like excuse you would think of for the tattoo. That's hilarious. It's kind of like when Jeff Probst talks about like relationships. He's like, so tell me what it's like to feel emotions for another human being. Like, that's what Josh is doing. <laughs> so I... your siblings, neither of you are the parent. Tell me. I am a I am a fitness friend. I help people uh, with their physique. There you go. Well, he's got a great one, but um, he, he is not my number 12. My number 12, I have Matt. Um, for all the reasons we've discussed, uh, it does seem more likely that the showmance will get targeted and Matt just with his fake idol with it, seemingly from what we've seen, less personal connections than Franny has. I think he's more likely of the two to go home. Rounding out my rankings this week, I have Josh at spot 13. I thought he did a pretty good job of building trust with Carolyn, and my guess is that she did tell him to play the idol for himself. Part of me also thinks that Josh would never play the idol for anyone besides himself. I mean, he's a fan of the show. I don't think like he would have done that necessarily, but I do think uh, Carolyn probably extended that olive branch, told him what was going on. But now he's going to be indebted to her. So to have his fate out of her hands and ultimately, I, I believe if Tika loses, the scenario is going to be Carolyn weighing her options between keeping Jam Jam or keeping Josh. And Jam Jam, she's known for 10 days at this point and Josh just showed up a couple days ago. So it's it'll be tricky to see, but I, I am less optimistic about Josh. Uh, in spot 13, I have Jam Jam. Uh, hopefully next week we'll get the answer to the question we've all been asking ourselves. Uh, what is up with the bitch face? <laughs> uh, nobody had a worse week uh, than Jam Jam, but maybe, maybe Sarah. Sarah, okay, Sarah had a, a worse week than Jam Jam. Uh, but you know, maybe he can match. Uh, he can patch things up with Carolyn uh, long enough so they can get to the merge. Maybe he and Josh can realize that working with Carolyn is a recipe for disaster. Uh, either way, uh, my bitch face has a broken heart um, that I have to have Jam Jam this low. Uh, in, yeah, in I, I hope I, you're wrong. Jam Jam in the merge is just a recipe for hilarity, and I want to see it. So. Uh, uh, Fingers crossed. I want him on TV as long as possible. He's he's gold. And I've said this a million times already, but if, if Carolyn wasn't on the season, he'd be the star of the show. He'd have nine confessionals an episode. He's he's really fun uh, to watch. And it's just, he seems like a good dude. I, I, I really hope I get to meet him one of these days. But yeah, I, I, I think that's a good that's a good guess. I, I mean, we'll see what happens if they lose. But I agree. I think the three person tribe, that's why I have Tika at the bottom for me, a three person tribe and a challenge. You can't sit anybody out. And uh, we've seen Carolyn has struggled with certain elements. Jam Jam on the balance beam was not particularly uh, balanced. So it's uh, it, it could be a tough, tough day at the office for Tika. We shall see.
let's just put this into the universe. If Jam Jam goes home, uh, a pitch for Carolyn and Jam Jam to be the new leads in the next Island of the Idols. Oh, you know, amazing. With the big, giant wooden heads of them out. Oh, Absolutely. I co sign that 100%. Okay. Our picks are locked in. Speaking of locks, uh, we have two locks for the week. Heidi is going to do really well, and Kane. Uh, it's potentially middle of the pack, but will probably be okay. Uh, our biggest disparity of the week was Brandon. I thought it was going to be. Def- I thought definitely it was going to be Carolyn. I'm very. I'm. Sh- I'm shocked uh, that you have Brandon so low. Uh, that's an eight point difference. If he goes home, you got this thing wrapped up. We can call it a day. <laughs> yeah, we shall see. I hope he doesn't. I, I'm actually. I really like Brandon. Um, he's an interesting character. He kind of breaks the mold of some of the like just ex NFL players that they try to cast. Like he's a very multidimensional person. He's getting confessional. He's showing some strategic chops. Um, but I do think just this, this stage of the game is dangerous for the really, really uh, athletic people. Um, I think it could be an easy target on him, but we'll see. I still think uh, Tika is most likely to lose. So, but we've we'll seen Brandon's story. And if Dalton Ross has taught us anything, it means that they're in jeopardy. Also means if we see Josh's story this week, He's Bad cooked. news. Yeah. He's, he's yeah. Cooked. We'll see. Now that you need you need that backstory package before you get voted out. Right. All right. Well, we're our picks are, are, are ready to go. Put your picks in the comments section below. Uh, if you beat Owen and I, we'll give you a shout out, pat on the back. If you do horribly, again, we're not gonna be too mean. We'll just uh, gentle <laughs> ribbing. Uh, we're not monsters. Um, uh, but yeah, be sure to come back this Thursday uh for Mag's interview with the latest castaway. Owen won't, um, but uh, that's okay. Uh, Owen, oh, you know, I, I, I tease, but you, I love you. You're doing great. You're killing me. Thanks, obviously man. you're doing great. So, uh, thank you so much for taking part, uh, in this. Of course. This thanks week. for inviting me again. It's, it's an honor to be here and it's, it's really fun. So it's, it's good to check in with you every week and, uh, we'll see if I smoke you again this time. Come on, Brandon, you can do it. You can like, don't <laughs> care. Oh, if Carolyn goes home, high five and a million angels. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, that's all we got. So, uh, please join us next Monday, uh, for even more survivor power ranking.